Hello and welcome to uh, Veterans Medals Workshop. I'm Frank Foster, your host, an old soldier, and the author of a number of books on military awards. And today I want to talk you through a brand new book on Marine Awards and Insignia that uh, is just out. It covers over 200 pages of every Marine medal, ribbon, or insignia, uh, to include the badges. And it replaces Jim Thompson's two former books that were a complete guide to Marine Corps medals, ribbons, and insignia. Uh, Jim's books are the only books that were out there on this subject. Uh, they sold almost 40,000 copies, and uh, well, they're out of print. They're all sold out, and besides that, I regret to inform you, they're probably obsolete. However, lucky day for you, we're going to take a look at the new one that is complete. I've taken a uh, hardback copy apart and uh, had it spiral bound so it'll be a little bit easier to flip through and show it to you. Um, the book opens with the beginning of military awards and it goes back a little bit to Roman history to show they were the first with the awards. Mm -hmm. It uh, traces the chronological development of marine awards, insignia, and uniform items up through the Civil War. Um, uh, has some uh, pretty cool pictures of uh, Marine uniforms during World War I and the uh, awards of the First World War. A great picture of a young Marine wearing the 2nd Infantry Division patch. All the Marine regiments were assigned to uh, the Army's 2nd Infantry Division. Uh, but the Marines had the last laugh. Uh, Major General uh, Lejeune commanded the 2nd Infantry Division, the only time in the history of the Army that someone other than a, a soldier has commanded an American uh, Army division. There's a great little section here, um, chronologically in World War II and how the campaign medals were broken out by what geographical area, uh, on through uh, the uh, basic medals that uh, were presented for Korea, the Cold War uh, period, uh, the basic medals for service in Vietnam, the, uh, including some Vietnamese medals, then the, uh, the, the medals awarded for the Gulf War, the liberation of Kuwait, uh, <clears throat> and the, uh, the new NATO medals that go out in the Marine Corps. A great section on early Navy and Marine Corps wing insignia, uh, going back to the First World War and coming all the way up to the Naval Astronaut insignia. And then the, uh, uh, a breakout of all the current breast badges, uh, airborne badges, uh, EOD, uh, and even a new Marine Special Operations insignia. Um, incredible badge, that one. Both officers and enlisted. And uh, to include on the officer side, uh, probably one of the best layouts I've ever seen of the uh, cuff uh, rank insignia for uh, general officers, field grade officers, and company grade officers, both officer and enlisted. Never quite been able to figure those out before. Uh, very nice chart on marine ranks from 1944 up to the present, so you can make a corresponding evaluation of them, or if you're interested in ones, uh, and of course all of the marksmanship and trophy badges for competitive. Oh, this is one of the neatest sections, and this is a shoulder sleeve insignia or shoulder patches that the Marine Corps wore in World War II. And uh, this tells you the history behind it, uh, about bogging you down, and then an example of every one of the historical authentic patches uh, for the Marine Corps during World War II. All of the medals of World War II, uh, to include the Philippine medals, um, the Korean medals, the Vietnam campaign basic medals, and then the medals of Southwest Asia, Bosnia, Kosovo, Afghanistan, Iraq. Uh, one of the most unusual things about the book is this great uh, section on the, how to prepare a display case that tells the story of a veteran's service. In this particular case, you know, the, the rank badges, the uh, collar insignia, ribbons, medals, um, shooting badges, how do you display those? What you really want to see is an example of each one of those periods. So there's a complete spread on World War II uh, Marine veteran displays. And one of the things that, that makes this very cool is that most of the Marines did not get their medals at the end of World War II because 
uh, the metals weren't being made. All of the production for brass was going into munitions and ammunition. And so what everybody got when they came home were ribbon bars. And uh, it wasn't until 46 and 47 they started producing the campaign medals. And then by that time, most of the Marines had gone home is they never got the medals. But now they're available. And this shows how they can be displayed. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, examples from 1947 on up would include the Cold War, uh, the Korean War, Vietnam service, uh, different examples. You know, every veteran's experience was different. And so each one of their display cases is a little different. It's kind of cool. Uh, Examples of Desert Storm, the liberation of Kuwait, the liberation of Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, the war on terror. Uh, then a nice section on how veterans can claim their medals or how retirees can claim them uh, and how families can claim them. Uh, and the government will furnish them if, if you're willing to, uh, you know, go through the procedures. An incredible chart here maybe the only one around that uh, shows Marine Corps decorations of unit awards and service ribbons from the Civil War all the way up to today that Marines have received. And then uh, perhaps one of the most practical things in the whole book is this Marine Corps ribbon uh, chart, which uh, shows you, you know, for example, if you had a Marine's awards and you wanted to break the code and decipher what they are, well, it's very easy to go and find it and to see what the attachment is for it. And this one shows, of course, that uh, not only did he get the Good Conduct Medal and a uh, Marine in uh, Accommodation Medal and Achievement Medals with multiple awards, but he'd also served uh, two campaigns in Iraq. And, and I forgot to point out, if you come down here, he's had two mobilizations while serving in the reserves. Uh, in, a, in a very clear explanation on how you can wear the Ribbons, you know, either separated an eighth of an inch apart or, and these being the same ribbons, you can stack them on top of each other. And that lays it out pretty clearly for folks with examples on how they're worn for both male and female. An incredibly interesting chart which shows a lot of Marines have had previous service in either the Air Force or the Navy or the Army. And they're authorized to wear some of the ribbons and decorations they have received in those services. Uh, and this chart shows you which ones are authorized, where they go in the order of precedent, and also a list that here says which ones are not authorized. Maybe that's even better. Uh, some really good information on how attachments go on to the ribbons and all of the updated campaigns for Afghanistan and Iraq. This is, I don't know if this is around anywhere else, but this breaks out for the Marine Corps every attachment that can go on a ribbon from World War I up to today to include the new uh, combat uh, device and uh, uh, our device for remote. And I'll show you some more on that. Uh, and then even more information on how you put together the full-size medals and how they're worn and the miniatures for both male and female. Uh, and then you really get to the heart of the book, and that is the Pyramid of Honor. Uh, and, and it opens by giving you um, an example of all of the medals authorized the armed forces. Uh, and then it goes uh, specifically into the Marine Medals, uh, and starting with the Marine Medal of Honor, all the variations of it since the Civil War, uh, to include the famous Tiffany Cross. And, okay, for example, on the Silver Star Medal, you know, it's a, they're full size. You can't tell the difference of them. They're beautifully done. Shows front and back, all variations of it. Gives you the uh, history behind it, the criteria, and um, what the symbolism of the medal is. Awesome. Real good layouts when you get to medals like the Bronze Star. It shows you how it's worn, how it's displayed, how it's presented in the case. Even the Bronze Star Tide, license plates, really cool stuff, really cool. And on, on the uh, Purple Heart, it's uh, an example of the earlier Purple Hearts in World War II. It had uh, 
serial numbers engraved on them. They quit doing that in World War II just to, to save money. And uh, also, had, it, it gets into some interesting stories telling you that the uh, armed forces requested a half a million Purple Hearts prior to the invasion of Japan. And of course, they didn't need them. The production run wasn't finished till 46 or so. So they went into storage. So many of the Purple Hearts presented in Korea, Vietnam, and even later were originally intended for guys' grandfathers if they had to invade Japan. Uh, all of the rest of the decorations here to include the variations of the air medal and the different ways in which the ribbon only awards for combat action, a presidential unit citation, uh, the uh, Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal, a little extra on that, showing some of the early variations, and then the uh, Good Conduct Medal, different ways it displayed from uh, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, uh, Cold War, and the uh, service medals are early campaign medals. And the rarest of all the campaign medals out there is the uh, Marine Civil War campaign medal or service medal. They only made 200 of them. Uh, they were issued or minted and numbered. So if you ever find one, you found uh, an extraordinarily rare metal, Metals, which is kind of interesting because it, it, it refocuses you here saying, okay, this we, these are the basic campaign medals that were awarded to Marine veterans in World War II, you know, the American campaign medal, and it gives you all of the specifications and when you get into something like the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal, it gives you a list of all of the campaigns and examples of how the campaign stars went on there. And service Medal, almost everyone has that uh, starting when in the, in the 90s. And here are examples of how it would display or go in with the other awards of the period. Great layout for the Korean Service Medal. There must be 15 examples here because the Marines really did a lot of heavy combat in the Korean conflict. All of the campaigns for the Vietnam Service Medal and a number of different displays for that medal. Same thing for Southwest Asia or the Liberation of Kuwait, the Kosovo Campaign Medal, uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, um, the Inherent Resolve Campaign Medal, that is the very latest one to come out. It was instituted in 2016. And the Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal. Uh, this is Reserve Medal, yes, which um, goes on to show you that there are five different backs, one for each one of us different services. Uh, unique to this book is a, um, a section on the award of foreign military decorations. It starts here with the Croix de Guerre for World War II. Then the Vietnamese medals that a lot of the Marines receive Vietnamese decorations um, as well as service medals. And these are the main Vietnamese decorations that were presented to uh, Vietnam veterans that served in the Marine Corps. Especially a lot of the Marines receive the Civic Action well, Medal. Yeah. All of the current United Nations medals that uh, members of the armed forces are eligible for. Uh, the medals are all the same, the medallions, uh, only the ribbons have changed. Uh, and you can only wear one ribbon at a time. You can just put a, a campaign star on if you've served in more than one UN deal. Uh, NATO, Meritorious Service Medal, as well as the Article 5 and non-Article 5 medals. And uh, you, you need to buy the book to learn the difference. And the Vietnamese uh, Campaign Medal, as well as the campaign medal issued by the government of Saudi Arabia and Kuwait for the liberation there. And then finally, last but not least, the Republic of Korea War Service Medal. It only took about 50 plus years for the United States to accept. And that is why it is the last one that is the last foreign uh, award authorized. And here's a great example of a Korean uh, uh, Marine veteran with his three Purple Hearts, Good Conduct Medal, three campaign battle stars, his UN Medal, and his Korean War Service Medal. Uh, a little section uh, on commemorative and society medals that some of the Marines asked to have included in here. And then the famous George Medal that the 1st Marine Division struck itself uh, in honor of the Navy abandoning them in Guadalcanal. Some uh, background on some commemorative medals. 
And then finally, uh, a little section on how rank and city and service stripes go on with different uniforms for male and female. 208 pages, very nicely done. Um, Smythe sewn, heavy gloss paper, printed in the United States, hardbound. In fact, it may be the only book it printed in the United States where the lead pressman asked to have his name on the title page. He was so proud of having printed this book. And I think you can see the quality of it all through there. So uh, that's it. It's a very reasonably priced $29.95 for a hardback. I don't know how it's done that way, but uh, I, I certainly do recommend it. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the show. And I don't think you'll be disappointed in this new book, Marine Awards and Insignia. Uh, it's without a doubt the best thing in the market. So uh, until next time, let me know any questions you have on any awards, medals or insignia. Glad to answer them.